Well, welcome to our truck show round. This is our truck. Let's have a look. You can see, I think, one of the most obvious things is the, the frame around the cab, okay? And, and quite often people ask us, what's it for? Um, I suppose it does a number of things, really, but I suppose the most important thing it does is it actually protects, one, protects the cab, and two, protects the habitation box um, right. from anything that's low-hanging, be that trees, cables, uh, anything that might damage the box uh, and it just sort of helps you throw it up off over the top uh, of, the, of the vehicle itself um, we've got a number of features on the on the truck and one of the reasons why we like this this truck uh, when we were contemplating buying a truck is it's old school it, it's of a certain era it's very basic non electrical um, and actually very very simple in design so it just means that if we do have a problem when we're abroad two things one man are an excellent dealership or manufacturer in terms of um, spare parts but secondly because it is so simple um, you can generally get parts be it second hand or even fabricated so that was a really big plus for us very conscious that the truck is now 21 years old um, even though it's got, got low mileage, um, we're, we're, you know, it's always the back of your mind, something is going to fail at some point. We've got a 300 liter fresh water tank and 70 liter permanent hot water tank. Um, so we've got a total of 370 liters to play with at any one time. One of the things I'd like to do is to upgrade the fuel tank. It's currently 130 liters and that for me just isn't quite big enough so i would like to try and increase it to 200 liters if possible uh, and I, I think that's achievable at the same time i'll probably put on a snorkel okay and put this uh, on top of the cab so this is the basically the air filter um, and again from a fording point of view water crossing point of view it's going to make a lot more sense if that's mounted up in this area up here. You'll note on the side of the box itself that we've got an exhaust. Um, when we run a number of heating systems, so we have a Hurricane um, 7.5 kilowatt output, which it's pretty noisy. It, it's heavy duty. It's very, very capable. Uh, it comes from, from the, it's American, comes from the marine industry. Um, but we felt it was a little bit overkill. Um, so that heats the hot water and the heating. So we have wet central heating. So we have underfloor wet heating. Uh, we have a tile rail and we have a radiator uh, in the, the living space as well. Um, so what we did was for everyday use, we put in, in addition, uh, an Ebus backer. Uh, it's five kilowatt. It's, it's been brilliant actually, uh, pretty flawless. Um, so that's that's working really well um, we've been using that for the last sort of six months now so we're we're really happy with that um, and the other addition that i that i did just when we we're talking about heating is put in a chinese diesel heater uh for 120 euros i thought 
can't be wrong. What we're finding was the heating is good as it is and it is brilliant. If when you get up in the morning, it's just like a house. So it, it's wet, it obviously has to heat um, the water in the tank and the pipes. Um, and it was quite slow to actually warm up the space. So we just thought, right, what we'll do is, uh, because we had really cold weather, I'll put in, I'll try it for the sake of 120 euros. I'll give it a go. Um, and I put in a Chinese diesel heater. I was really skeptical to start with, but I did loads of research. Uh, there's lots of good videos on YouTube. And I thought, yeah, actually these look okay. My main concern really was safety. So we've, I've had it fitted now for about, well, I fitted it myself. It's been in four months and it's been brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So really easy to fit. Uh, little remote control so I can lie in bed in the morning, um, pop on the heating and within about 10, 15 minutes, wow, the place is absolutely toasty. And at the same time, I'll put on the, um, the separate heating and you know, all you need is sort of 20 minutes maximum with the Chinese diesel heater, get the space warmed up, turn it off, and then the rest of the heating just kicks in. And it's, it's been brilliant. Uh, so you've probably noticed the little giveaway Thetford hatch for the toilet cassette. Um, now we did have a Thetford fitted, um, but I wanted a compost toilet. Um, it was one of the things that always sort of drove us into campsites and it was just, you know, once the, uh, the cassette's full, it's full. What do you do with it? Um, so we actually put in a, took out the old Thetford, put in a compost toilet, and I, I would say it's probably the best upgrade that we've done. It's working out really well. Okay, I'm gonna show you that once we go inside. So the back of the truck, we've got our little trusty scooter, and we've had this ever since we've been on the road. It's been brilliant and we love it and we wouldn't be without it. So it was a really big consideration when we we're thinking about buying the truck, you know, what do we do with, you know, in terms of getting a bite. So we actually put the truck into fabricators to have various bits of work done. And this is one of the bits of work um, that we had done. So we had a little rack made for the back. We actually fitted or no, we didn't fit. We had fitted uh, a 24 volt winch electrical winch um, with a with a remote so it's brilliant which means that I can actually load the scooter myself um, without the need for anyone else's assistance so on the right hand side of the garage we've got our bank of lithium batteries and we've got four 200 amp hour lithium batteries and we run a 24 volt system so we have 400 amp hours at 24 volts or effectively 800 amp hours at 12 volts uh, we've got the top box for the scooter and just behind the top box we've got our Orion uh, B2B and then the rest of it really is just all the, the normal stuff you need when traveling um, I keep most of it boxed up we've got some spares all the usual camping gear a load of toolboxes um, and then we've got a couple of gas bottles in the back along with the toilet rolls tables and chairs and all the usual stuff you need when traveling full-time and then I just keep a couple of wheel chocks just here okay right and that's about it now one of the best upgrades that we did actually was to utilize this little tool bin um, and we put in a double drawer for the Kadak and we love this because we love to cook outside so this just basically if I can do this with one hand pulls out here and there we have it we have a Kadak so we've got the gas in the garage we've got our Kadak here I keep a little scrubber okay because we've got a number of plates griddle plates and so on for the top uh, we've got our pizza stone and all that sort of stuff and we use this as you can see it's pretty filthy and we use this all, well, every day so this has been brilliant so as we move around the vehicle we can see that we have our step arrangement and we have this big tool bin in here as well and we use this for all our uh, water sports and outdoor gear 
So the step is one of the things that we had fabricated. Um, we weren't happy when we first bought the truck of the arrangement, which basically was the case of taking this ladder. You had to physically remove the ladder and take it around the other side, put it on top of the, the fuel tank and, and strap it down and mess it by it. It was just completely faff and I, I, I just thought we, we can't be doing with that. So uh, again, our, our, our team in Norfolk, really good guys, um, they come up with um, the solution to, to modify the ladder and to modify the frame so that this basically falls away um, into this little frame, this platform, and then the whole thing just stows under the truck. Now you can see we've got an awning fitted and it is pretty high. Um, there is one advantage with that, to be honest with you, and that is that when it's really hot and the sun is shining on this side, we've got three windows and we do get quite a lot of solar gain, sorry, thermal gain, I should say. And so one of the things we can do is just pop the awning out about a meter, meter and a half, and that just gives us a little bit of shade on this side of the truck. Um, it actually comes out quite a long way. Uh, it's electrically operated and it does have a wind sensor so if it gets too windy it just automatically retracts. One of the things that we have done, had to do, was change the tyres um, and when we bought the truck there was Michelin all round, uh, probably the best tyre and certainly the most expensive on the market um, but they were a bit old so two of them were changed uh, and then when we were travelling through Spain we had a blowout. Um, if you've ever had a blowout in a truck, it's a pretty big deal. Um, and I was doing about sort of 56, 57 miles an hour at the time um, on the motorway, and it was just like an explosion. Uh, it's the only way I can describe it. Um, the mud guard was in pieces. Uh, the tire was was not in a good place. Um, and the vehicle was all over the road. Thankfully, there was nobody beside me at the time and I managed to get it pulled in. And thankfully, more importantly, it was on the rear wheel. Um, so I was still able to steer, keep control of the vehicle. Um, but the fallout from that was that we, uh, we decided to change all the tires to be in the safe side. So what we did was we actually, we had a little look at tires. Um, but we ended up putting on two Dunlop tires on the front. So as you can see on the on the rear and on the spare, we've got Michelin's. Okay, and you can see the tread pattern on the Michelin's. Yeah, so they're Michelin XZLs. Really, really good tire, but really, really expensive. So we've actually gone for still a good tire. This is a Dunlop, and it is a slightly different tread, okay? Um, but the difference was about 200 euros each per tire uh, in cost difference. So you're talking, yeah, in the range of sort of 800 pounds for a Michelin, 600 pounds, well, 630, I think it was. Um, for the Dunlop so it's not a cheap exercise um, and it's been pretty eye-watering actually um, having to change all five tires um, so that said uh, we thought we wouldn't have an issue with tires for a very long time and then the other day uh, we had a puncture um, but as it turned out it wasn't the puncture it was the gator so one of the gators so we run split rims um, and with a split rim you actually have a gator or a, um, a wheel liner um, it's just a bit of rubber that runs the around the, the steel rim and that really had perished and caused the tube um, basically to nip and, and we got a puncture okay so uh, yeah, we haven't really had much luck with tyres, uh, but fingers crossed now, you know, new tube, new tyre, uh, back on the road, and here we are, everything seems fine. So hopefully we're good for years to come. Right, let's have a little look inside the cab. 
So we have a fairly basic instrument panel. Uh, we also have an immobilizer fitted as well and a tracker. Um, we've got our sat nav here, which is obviously a truck sat nav. We've got our reversing camera just here, phone holder. And then on the left hand side, we've got our battery guard, which is proved to be brilliant. So we're not stranded. And then we've got our controls then for four wheel drive, high and low ratio uh, and our differential locks. And then really it's just a case of heater controls, some USB points um, and that's about it. Now the actual fabrics and the materials in the cab are in really, really good condition. I mean, you can see the headlining of the seats, the plastics, there's, there's hardly a mark on them. So again, that was one of the big attractions. We looked at a lot of trucks where, you know, they've either been used as, you know, tree surgeons or they've been used by local authorities and they've been used. The cabs are pretty filthy everything's marked the seats are absolutely hanging um, and so this by comparison was like brand new um, so yeah actually you know it's a really good little space for two people it works really well now one of the things that we had to do when we bought the truck was fit air conditioning it was it was almost a showstopper um, we knew we would need air conditioning in the cab um, and so before we actually made an offer on the truck, we did a lot of homework. We tried to understand um, if it was possible. Um, we must have spoken to every fabricator, retrofitter, air conditioning specialist up and down the country. Um, and it was going to be a challenge. We knew that people said it is possible. Um, there's a number of options out there, but it's not straightforward. We even spoke to MAN. They put a technical request into MAN Germany and they said, yeah, it's it's doable, but it would be a lot of money. You know, we're, we're in the region of fitted in the region of sort of seven, eight thousand pounds. And we just thought, well, that's, you know, that's ridiculous money. We're not going to do that. So we'll look for an aftermarket solution. So it took um, a lot of effort. And in the end, we've had to go with this Webasto roof mounted system and it's fine it's absolutely fine it, it works really well um, but it is an electrical solution as opposed to being driven off the engine um, so having a compressor which is driven by belt off the engine which is always which was our our choice our first choice really uh, and that would they work so much better um, that said um, at least we have air conditioning so i think what we are trying to do is sort of manage where we are and ultimately if we're in a country and it's 45 degrees we're probably in the wrong country um, we don't have air conditioning in the habitation space and so we really have to sort of think about where we are well I think I've talked for long enough let's go inside and see what is he's up to Lots of you have been asking for a show round of the inside of our truck since we started our eBay channel. Uh, no, it's not an eBay channel, it's e Anyway, it's a YouTube channel, not an eBay channel. So, you see, I've got shopping on the brain. So, um, what I wanted to say was we did actually buy Tonka on eBay. Lots of people have asked us, where, where do you find, you know, a truck like that? So it was already done uh, in, in the main um, and we found it just browsing on, on eBay. Um, so when we got Tonka, um, so the truck body is about uh, 20 years old, but the back box had been put on nine years ago. Um, it had a little bit of a, an upgrade in between times, but there was a bit of work that needed to be done to get the truck ready for what we wanted to use it for and, and how we wanted to live. So the first um, the first bit to show you, is, I suppose, is this main area. This is where we live. It's where we lounge. It's where we eat. It's where we work. Um, and actually, the table can be taken off and it can become a, a, a small double bed as well. Uh, so it's where one of us sleeps if we have an argument. Uh, so this is an area where we spend a lot of our time, so we wanted it to be comfy. When we got the truck, the seats were black pleather, uh, and we thought they might be a bit hot and sticky and sweaty, so we sw swapped them for this sort of lovely soft grey felt that we've got on now. 
Um, one of the reasons we liked this area so much was that we could work back to back with our laptops on the, at the table um, and still have plenty of space for Phil to spread around his various cables and bits of equipment that he likes to use. We've got an amazing view across the across the top of the cab um, and yeah we, we just love sitting and working in here it's really comfortable space. So underneath the space which is raised uh, is where our fresh water tank is so almost all of this space under here is a is a 300 litre fresh water tank um, and just to the right of that is a 70 litre um, hot water tank which can be heated either by, via the diesel powered Ebersbacher or by immersion when we're plugged into shore power. At the back we've got our escape hatch which leads through to the cab which hopefully we never have to use but it does mean we've got emergency access um, and under here is the um, is the heater uh, uh, pipe for, for the Chinese diesel heater that Phil fitted which is actually just sited up behind this door here. Um, we didn't like the black cover that they gave us for the Chinese diesel heater uh, so we bought a white one on um, eBay uh, which promptly melted so we're without one at the moment because we can't get anything from Amazon in Greece right now. Uh, so that's that area. One of the additions that we made um, was the television. So there was nowhere to have a television and it, it didn't feel quite right because we do like a bit of television. We like to watch the news and so we cut this cupboard up and we fitted a space in here. We made our own mount for it. Well, Phil did. I say we, but Phil did that. Um, and we and it just slides out so we can watch it perfectly from our from our lounging space. Um, and then up in the corner, uh, we've got all of our control panels. So we've got a couple that, that are redundant because they go with the hurricane diesel heater that Phil told you about. We've just left them there for now. Uh, we've got this tells us how much fresh water and wastewater we've got. This is the uh, the controller for the Abersbacher for the heating for the radiators and the hot water. Um, and this is a Victron battery monitor uh, that monitors the, what's going on in the boot with the system. So in terms of the Victron system, uh, we have 400 amp hours uh, at 24 volts. So we've got four pretty chunky uh, 20, uh, 12 volt batteries in there, wired up in series and then parallel. Um, they uh, are powered by an Orion DC to DC charger that takes the charge from the engine, uh, by 600 watts of solar on the roof, um, and also by shore power when we're plugged in. Uh, all of that comes through what's called an Easy Solar, which is a multi-compact, uh, multi-plus compact, sorry, and an MPPT charger. Uh, we're really liking the system so far. Lithium's been a really new thing for us and a steep learning curve, but it, yeah, it's performing really, really well. Um, so you can also see having the, uh, the multi-plus compact means that we've got permanent inverter. So we've, we've got these sockets are fitted around the truck, uh, which makes life a little bit easier than having to use 12 volt to charge. So in this storage here, we have a plumbed in uh, slimline uh, washing machine, which is a top loader. Um, so that, that can work from the inverter, but we're a little bit cautious because we haven't tested it that much. And we want to make sure we're somewhere where if we do drain the batteries, we can top them back up again easily enough. And then we fitted these, these just this drawer storage for, for bits and pieces. Uh, up here, we, ha we have a, a, some hanging storage. Um, and we did say we wouldn't bring so many clothes this time, but we always seem to end up bringing lots. Uh, and then just moving into the kitchen space, which I suppose is an, another area where we spend a bit of time, we, we have this brilliant pull-up worktop, so that gives us a huge run of work surface. Uh, this was Iroco when we first moved into the truck. Uh, we took that out and replaced it with Corian, which is easier to keep clean. Um, it, it's white, so it's a bit lighter, uh, and we, we just prefer it, basically. We put in a new sink, uh, and Phil routed out this to give us a little worktop space if we don't want to pull the side up. And from here, the new tap that we put in, uh, we've also got a 3M water filter, which means we can pretty much fill up from anywhere. Um, this is gas. We did contemplate taking it out and putting in an induction hob uh, because we didn't really want to carry a second means of fuel. Um, so all of our heating is powered by diesel. Uh, but we, we decided to leave it. It was, it was expensive. Um, and B, you know, cooking on gas is easy. 
it was a lot of work to do so we we've kept it as it is and actually we're really happy we did it, it's we've got four rings it means you can cook a proper meal and so on and then down below we've got a grill which is great for toast um an oven and then some brilliant storage under here for pans and things uh, and then we've got our usual sort of cutlery storage and so on in these drawers you'll note they all have these big really heavy duty locks uh, to make sure that everything stays secure when we're traveling um, we have a larder space here uh, we put these drawers in so when when we got the truck there were there were really there was nothing in any of the storage spaces so there was there was no no way of keeping things secure so so we fitted the drawers uh and they've been a really good addition we've got a bin and then the all-important wine storage next to that uh, another thing that we we upgraded was the fridge so we had a small dometic fridge when we uh, got the truck oh, which was okay it was leaking slightly um, so we knew that it was probably on the way out so we made the decision to replace it with a fridge freezer so we've got a freezer portion at the top and then we've got a big I guess about a hundred litre fridge there um, we need to go shopping there's not a lot in it at the moment uh, and we that that it, it, if I was building a truck from scratch I wouldn't have it next to the bed but do you know we've learned to live with it um, so we've got more storage here and then this here is um, shoe storage and a step up into the bed. I'll let Phil just go and show you into the bedroom. So we replaced the mattress. Uh, so this is an Emma uh, mattress that we have in here, um, a memory foam. Uh, it's really comfortable, a king size. And then on the back wall, we've decided to put up a big map of the world so that we can be inspired when we're lying in bed. Uh, and then I'm just gonna show you into the bathroom. I'll put the light on. So probably one of the best things that we did was to fit a compost toilet. Uh, we absolutely love it. it. It has changed our lives completely. There was a bench Thetford toilet in here with a cassette underneath, which we, well, I say we, again, I mean Phil took out. And you can find out more about that on our website if you check out um, composting toilets on the Gap Decaders. You can see the whole process of fitting it and, and a review of the toilet itself. Under the Iroko floor, is a, a full size shower tray to, to drain away the water. Uh, and then obviously we've got the sink area. Um, and I must admit, I do, I really like the bathroom. It's one of, it's one of the bits, I, my favorite bits about the truck. And then the other thing we did was we fitted this brilliant Perspex door. So we met a guy called Phil at the Overland show uh, last year who had a Perspex door on his bathroom. We loved it so much. We came back, we took off the slightly wonky uh, ply door that was on there and we ordered this online and fitted it. And we think it's brilliant. It lets enough light in to the bathroom to let the person use the bathroom without having to put the electricity on, um, but it conceals them from anybody outside. So it's pretty perfect, really. Um, I don't think there's a lot else to share with you other than a couple of uh, things to share with you, I suppose. We, we, all of our windows have these brilliant blackout blinds um, and then they also have these really good uh, fly screens as well, which can be halfway, up, down, whichever way you choose. So it just means we're safe from mosquitoes. We also fitted some ambient lighting. So when we inherited the truck, we just had these overhead lights, which are very white and very bright. They don't actually work terribly well for the kitchen area. So we put this little strip light in from B&Q. It runs off a, a 12 volt fitting. Um, and then we also added um, around the windows, uh, lots of ambient um, LED lighting, uh, just that's a bit warmer. And of an evening, it just, it, it's low level. It's not in your face. So that really is it. I hope you enjoyed the show round. If you've got any questions, drop us a comment below. Please don't forget to subscribe. We'd love to have you along for the trip. Take care. Bye.